Dude, this was awesome. Conservatives love crying about the dumbest shit, bro. They cried about this. They cry all the time. And then they say the left is constantly the snowflakes. It's like, bro, you saw a commercial and it shook you to your very core. You are not a serious person. You are not a man. Okay, be a man. This video is sponsored by- Should we by watch this Woke Brands one? We watched it so many years ago when it first came out, but it's still ever, it's still very important to watch. If there's- Oh, oh, good evening, fellow brain mind explorers. Harris Bomber Guy here. If there's one thing everyone knows about me, it's that I love how corporations and branding utterly dominate our culture. The golden arches, the Nike tick, the whatever distinctive thing Burger King has. These familiar designs help remind me I'm alive and the dopamine that pours from their food pipe is like the warm embrace of an attractive friend with maybe some benefits if they pity you enough. And golly, isn't it great when companies extol ideas that accord with my own values? That's like helping to spread a, a positive message and make the world a better place. And to show my support, I bought a bunch of their stuff online. I mean, you've got to support the heroes fighting for the right cause. After all, in what other way can we actually voice support for making the world better in a society where corporations have far more power over our world than any of the people who actually have to live in it? Oh, that's depressing. That's not going to be the point of the video, is it? The history of advertising, according to what I remember from high school media studies. Advertising has taken place for most of human history, but with the invention of the printing press and popularization of the newspaper, it really took off. Even as early as the 1800s, you couldn't read your paper for updates about the Fourth Anglo-Ashanti War without some little fucker telling you about his bovril. Invaluable to invalids and weak persons. You can't say that. Some people think of advertisements as value neutral. It's just a piece. Gotta go back to that, brother. A, a time when things are better where you can say invalid. <laughs> Brother, we gotta, we gotta fucking, what, what the fuck is Bovril? Piece of paper or some video footage conveniently letting you know about a thing that exists and what it does so you can make an informed decision about your potential purchase. Sam, I don't have to cut myself to shave close. This is the track two, the two-bladed razor from Gillette. The blades are recessed so it's safer. Because as we know, humans are perfectly rational actors. After all, capitalism works because it's just in everyone's rational self-interest to make a really good product. No, wait, hang on, I forgot about human psychology. You can just trick people into buying things. Oops. It turns out that it's possible to convince people to do things they wouldn't do otherwise, and probably shouldn't. Advertising is really a large collection of people trying to find the most effective way of getting you to give your money to their bosses to buy their thing. It's a massive and very lucrative industry. To put it the way this old cigarette commercial did, we're gonna get ya. One of the most effective ways to sell a product is to tie it to someone's sense of value or their goals. Owning this product will prove you're a successful person. This product will make you irresistible to women we made up. <coughs> Maybe if you ate at a fast food restaurant more, your children would love you, you piece of shit. But the problem is, this doesn't work forever. Advertising has become more and more ubiquitous, and audiences stop paying attention to commercials when they're a lot like ones they've seen thousands of times before. You have to push these ideas is harder and harder for them to work. Over time, commercials became more and more brazen in associating their products with power and sex until it became so weird it's almost indistinguishable from a joke. Take this classic Big Mac poster where the burger's on a red velvet bed and it says, stop staring at me like I'm some piece of meat. Are you Mac enough? Like man enough? Like are you enough of a masculine manly man man to get into bed with this burger and just go to town? That was the coolest part of, like, early 2000 era advertising was when they were trying to get you to fuck the food. Like, literally, it's not even a joke. They were trying to get you to fuck the food. The the Carl's Jr. commercial immediately comes to mind when, you, when you're like, oh, look at Kate Upton. Now I want to have sex with the burger? Like, I don't know what's going on. I'm horny, and now I'm hungry. Your mouth. But you are a piece of meat. I... Uh.
Oh, I'm supposed to fuck this burger. Da -da 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 -da! By this point, advertisers had drilled so far down into the human id, they'd gone too far, broken through all pre-existing Freudian evo-psych theories and entered directly into the darkness of the human mind more, to the place where you're paying a supermodel to pretend to eat a burger in her bikini at the beach because maybe horny viewers will want to do a sex so badly they'll get hungry for a teriyaki burger. God, that burger is definitely covered in sand at this point. It would probably improve the flavor though. I love that the camera keeps cutting away before any of it ever goes in her mouth because it's basically poison. No, don't eat the pineapple, it's evil, don't! So it was clear to advertisers that a new strategy was required. Sex might sell, but it doesn't stand out amongst a crowd of sex. If you want people to pay attention, you have to do something truly different. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> This UK commercial for Apple earphones is incredibly memorable, even a decade later. It's probably in the top three most well-known pieces of video footage ever to grace our little aisles, just behind the old Smash commercials and the bit where Del Boy falls through the bar. It's so weird and devoid of anything you'd expect from an ad that it grabs your attention in a completely new way. It's so memorable, except of course for the part where it wasn't a commercial for earphones. I made that up, it was for Cadbury's chocolate, you gormless rube! The last decade of marketing school graduates are people who saw commercials damn maxilla pharrell was not owned look at that it was like this and the power and memorability they had and when yeah i can do that ex except you just basically self-admitted that you're british which is i mean some of those w's you don't take you know what i mean because ultimately it could turn to an l yeah no I guess it's a Tuesday, so it's all right, right? Fucking, it's a Tuesday. I'm Alaskan. I grew up on the international internet. No, you're still not defeating the British allegations. Sorry. You can't just say, I'm Alaskan. Exactly like that. I'm going to be weird too. But the problem with everyone trying to be weird and different and stand out all at the same time is they kind of all stopped standing out, like, immediately. So tons of commercials nowadays are just super out there and bizarre and have nothing to do with the product. But you still don't really notice or care because you're already attuned to it. Nowadays, the only ads that stand out are, like, the ones that are just so bad that you remember them to make fun of them. Let's do that now! Remember the shit Hydrobot? Hydrobot, at it again! Who you remember specifically because it's a really awkward and terrible way of promoting anything? I don't think they sold many products off the back of this thing. People just remember it because Transformers Razor. You want to shave yourself with a razor that's gonna fucking turn into a car and cut your fucking face off? Me and my brother still sing jingles from like old ass Turkish commercials on television to one another. That's it. That's like the only shit. Dude, commercials are actually pretty fucked up when you think about it. I don't know any of this stuff because I didn't grow up in America or anything like that. But commercial jingles are, are so, I don't know. They're so captivating and hypnotic, like hypnotizing that like you kind of still remember it, I think. Free your skin. I do not want to free my skin. <laughs> but worse than that, this goes a layer deeper. Remember the Schick Hydro Silk robot? You probably didn't because you've had a trillion other deeply stupid things flashed directly into your cortex. But I remember it all. I remember it so you don't have to. Kill me! Shek Hydro Silk. Free your skin. Free your skin! This commercial is currently unlisted from Shik Hydro Silk's channel. I can't imagine why. With the creation of this, uh, Titty Robot Adventure commercial, it's clear that all pre existing methods of advertising are failing to work that well. Plus, in a way, for the first time in a while, there are less venues to advertise to people now than there used to be. A lot of people don't really watch television anymore and consume content on their computers with ad blockers enabled, the cowards. If you use an ad blocker, you're basically snatching the soy from my savoring mouth. Whenever a successful method of getting your brand attention is found, it's swiftly copied and repeated, quickly rendering it useless. The 
fastest cycle I've seen is with the trend of weird brand Twitter, like Wendy's having a go at people, or Arby's making funny cardboard things, or Sunny Delight's recent depression tweet. These are meant to make the brand seem <laughs> personal that. That and ironic, funny. and not like a corporation who wants your attention and money, but to a trained eye, they do the opposite. A sizable company's not letting their media managers run their accounts in this manner unless they've done painstaking market research and found it to be beneficial to do. And what's more, since it's literally free to do this, every even vaguely savvy brand's getting in on it, which has swiftly made it a saturated format that bores people and makes it lose the sense that this is in any way unique. I mean, if fucking corn nuts are getting in on it now, it's not gonna work anymore. Corn nuts. The world's most underrated snack. That's one way to channel the fact people don't like you. Soon it'll be so ubiquitous that people just tune it out like all regular advertisements. Which means marketing companies are looking for a new way to push their products into your consciousness. And they've found it in a very strange place. And it technically happened by accident. Woke marketing. Outrage capitalism. Oh my god. Keurig. Is it Keurig or is it Keurig? Keurig? Ugh, it's, just, it's fine. Look, I already recorded this bit, so if I pronounce it wrong, whatever. In late 2017, when American talk show host Sean Hannity came to the defense of Roy Moore, everyone would agree. Everybody. A 32-year-old man pursuing a 14-year-old girl is disgusting. That is something we should all agree on. This should transcend politics. But! <laughs> However, Media Matters president Angelo Caruso, wait, what if it's pronounced Carasoni? Oh, I should have checked. Among others, asked coffee machine company Keurig to reconsider sponsoring Hannity's show, and Keurig responded by tweeting that they were pulling their advertising. At least four other companies pulled advertising from Hannity's show for support. This is when Media Matters became like the ultimate demon too. Like the top of the hour ad break is the ultimate demon of chatters who are unsubscribed. This is when Media Matters basically was like, oh, they, they got all the power. Look at them, brother. What the fuck? They pulled Keurig off the, off the advertisement board. Up. I don't even know what I'm saying. Anyway, he's becoming too strong. Fuck yeah, dude. Ha <laughs> ha. Now, um, the chatter's worst nightmare could become just a uh, any other moment of the stream as long as you subscribe for $5 or for free. <laughs> Three minutes. Ad break is upon us. Reporting more, but Keurig visibly tweeting about doing it, and it getting a very large and vocal response and support for having done it, caused a lot of sudden reactions. In one corner of the internet, people were suddenly thinking about buying a Keurig coffee machine. I mean, they made a stand. A, in a very minor way. In another corner, marketing people, ad people, people whose job is to see what causes this kind of splash, started watching closely and taking notes. And in the saddest corner, Hannity fans went berserk. Oh. <laughs> Hope you're happy, Keurig. Ah, oh, yeah, that'll show him. This video published on the 12th of November, one day after Keurig's tweet, of self-appointed red pill aficionado Angelo John Gage destroying his Keurig coffee machine and making a huge mess of his garage in his pajamas. Ah, uh, but don't worry, he's wearing socks with his flip-flops, so he's protected. Has a shit ton of likes and retweets and sparked hashtag boycott Keurig, a sort of pseudo-protest movement where right-wing people are shocked and upset that a company wouldn't give money to someone they watch to sell them something they already own, destroy their expensive, functioning coffee machines they bought to spite the company for this horrendous slight. Uh, this, internally for Keurig, was initially thought of as a terrible accident. All these angry people harassing Keurig employees and even the brief, though ultimately insignificant, stink of a boycott. But, secretly, everyone was looking at how much attention Keurig was getting. You know what shows up a lot when there's a big hashtag about boycotting Keurig going around for days? The word- Proving that boycotts are incredibly successful and you're an asshole for now supporting them. Yeah. It's just so weird that I've uh, a guy like me who, one, was in advertising. Like, I literally did advertisement sales. I was on the other side of advertising, but I'm very familiar with advertising. Uh, who did it for years. I fucking despised it. Hated it. Um, who, who also covered this particular story back then under identical terms as uh, H-Bomber guy. 
has a has a bit to say about uh, decentralized boycott movements that famously lead to nowhere. Uh, you know, maybe I know a little bit more than you do. You know what I mean? Because back then, one, you didn't even know what your fucking gender identity was, and you probably were right wing. Okay, I was covering this shit back then too. Anyway, don't say fucking ego. It's the truth. I'm sick and tired of this. Saying, saying that, like, I've been doing this for a very long time is not fucking ego. Shut up. It's the truth. At Keurig, the story about what Keurig did and how people feel about it. And it turns out that this is very similar to marketing. Some people want to support Keurig for the nice thing they did. I mean, they took a stand by pulling some ads from one TV show for a while. And then there's the people who suddenly realize that they could do with a coffee machine since everyone's talking about them lately. And then there's the flip side of almost every boycott, which is the people who destroyed the thing that they own, realizing that they quite liked it. And hey, no one's really paying attention to whether or not I obey this boycott or not. So maybe I'll just get another one. It doesn't really make a big difference. And then of course there's the simple fact that people don't tend to go on with boycotts for very long. It happens. I hate to break it to you, but if you ever destroyed something that you own as part of a protest against a company's actions, statistically, you bought another one. And then you bought an extra one for one of your 2.14 kids. Probably Kevin. He gets all the nice things, doesn't he? What's wrong with me, mother? Don't you love me anymore? Sure, it's hilarious. These people are deeply foolish, and it's good, on some level, that sometimes advertisers don't support purveyors of a garbage ideology. But on the serious side, the analysts watching and waiting in the background learned an interesting lesson. All of this is a gold mine. It's more than a commercial. It's a real commercial. That's my word, I just coined it. Attribute it to me, put it in the dictionary. When you're the focus- it, It's called earned media. For the record, for those of you who don't know, the terminology in marketing for this is earned media. Or you could keep calling it what he said. ...of a discussion online. When you're a hashtag, millions can click on and check out. When you are the conversation for a brief moment that everyone feels expected to think about and have a take, not even an ad block can hide you. Not even someone who doesn't watch TV can miss your message. The exposure was massive, and it was effectively free. And... <laughs> I'm sorry, I just need to stop for a second to acknowledge how hilarious it is that the guy, like, couldn't frame it properly with his vertical phone video, so it keeps falling out of the fucking frame. <laughs> oh, Jesus. When I saw this, I told myself, the next time something like this happens, it won't be an accident. Nike. For those of you who aren't aware, it's pronounced Nike. That's right, I'm getting all high and mighty about how to pronounce the one I know how to pronounce. Just, just, just leave me alone. In September of last year, Nike pulled the trigger on a new commercial celebrating 30 years of their Just Do It slogan. The ad featured many great and famous athletes, but also featured and was narrated by Colin Kaepernick. Colin was 30 at the time, which made him the same age as the slogan, which was neat. I guess he's always been the same age as the slogan. <laughs> how does time work? This is a kind of cool commercial. It's encouraging. It prominently features and celebrates black athletes for their success, and it tacitly endorses Kaepernick's activism. Which goes a little beyond kneeling, by the way. He's done a lot of work and given a lot of support to organizations that do some really great stuff. This is 100% the most tasteful and inspiring shoe commercial I've ever seen in my life. But the commercial's content or quality wasn't really the point. The point was what happened next, and we all knew what was going to happen next. Everyone who you can expect to be mad about people protesting police brutality got mad and in a show of impotent rage at a shoe company for making bad commercial Mino like destroyed some of their personal property and started the hashtag burn Used to work in games PR earn media is literally what every single publisher talks about when starting a campaign They don't intentionally aim for controversy, but they all want to get a piece of that Twitter pie. No, they are they are. They, uh, in a lot of instances, they're going after it deliberately. I don't think they... I don't know. I mean, look, I haven't been in a boardroom ever, really. But also, I, I don't talk to marketers like I used to. Like, all of my friends that were in marketing now do podcasts. So I 
unfortunately don't have that same understanding of what's going on in the marketing world. But I would be shocked if they do not factor in the controversy and the counter purchasers uh, that, that come along with like any kind of boycott into their marketing campaigns. We have Big A. Yeah. I guess that's, well, not anymore. And your Nikes and tried to start a boycott. Our sound man just cut the Nike swoosh off his socks. Former Marine. Get ready, Nike. Multiply that by the millions. Looks like he's never used scissors before. Nah, he was just so wound up, he didn't take time. It's a wonder he didn't cut himself. You think we'll roll over on shit like this? My troop friend was so mad at his socks. He couldn't even... No. Wow, John Rich was back then. Even back then, John Rich still fucking putting himself in, as the face of these kinds of controversies, man. Am I burning my favorite pair of Nikes? You are burning your sales. You think that's going to happen? Over here, in reality, these bizarre property immolating protests against Nike. Trump rocks USA, dude. Like, <laughs> nowadays, if I saw an account like this, I'd be like, is this a parody account? But back then, this is, like, real. Like, they used to do this, really. Like, that was actually... Is what Aiden Ross Jackson and others are doing considered earned media when they do things that don't align with their values and politics for attention? Kind of. From a brand point of view, yes. Yeah, if you were to reduce what Twitch streamers do to, like, what brands do, yes, it is when you say some... XUC does it all the time. When he says some shit that he doesn't fucking believe, specifically, as it, uh, like, the whole, we do a little bit of trolling... Okay, they are doing that so that they get attention from people who fucking hate them. If you can figure out how to do that without losing your mind, you will become one of the best content creators online. I can't do that without losing my mind, unfortunately, which is why I suck at this. Really, just like you when you larp as a right winger. No, that's just a bit of fun for daring to feature a man who said police brutality was bad, made everyone want to talk about Nike and how cool they were being and make fun of these people for days on end. Nike was being given hundreds of millions of dollars of free advertising by people trying to punish them. Nike's value went up by, are you ready for this? Six billion dollars. By jolly, governor! That's a lot of shoes! Why did I do that? And they couldn't have done it without dozens of sad little boys telling you just how much bird-brained little shitheads like them hate Nike. That was kind of meta. You saying that you're totally not doing that to troll your haters into hating you more respect? No, I promise you I'm not. I promise you that I don't want the most schizophrenic motherfuckers to constantly say the same like 12 things that the original smaller group of schizophrenic motherfuckers made up about me. No, like it sometimes ends up yielding positive results. Like people coming in here who are also haters who then like go, wait a minute. This is not like, this is not correct. I promise you, I promise you it's not good. I would much rather have people say nice things about me than shitty things about me. It's just never going to happen because no matter what happens, uh, you know, I'm, I'm speaking about things I speak about, which has a built in hate watcher audience. I promise you I don't love it. There are real there are real world implications to that kind of thing that uh usually turns into just so much headache for me. Congratulations, kid. Throwing this in the fire because of Colin Kaepernick is now the face of Nike. Take this Nike. Take this Nike. He thinks he's hurting Nike by doing this. Six billion dollars. Six billion dollars. Five pairs of shoes in there. All gonna let Five them go. Just got this ad, which is exactly what you always talk about in anime. 17 years old. 17 year old Suzume encounters a young man named Sota who's traveling across Japan on a mysterious mission. You know what's funny? I was working out with uh, the voice actor of Suzume, the English voice actor of Suzume, this morning. Yeah. She just started training with my trainers. And she was, and I repeat, shocked to find out that both me and my trainer were really fucking into anime. She was like, what? You guys are like jocks. I was like, 
Thank you for saying that. I am not a weeb. You're right. You are bro-coded? I am. And then everyone clapped. You think this is a story I would make up? I don't give a shit. I'd say infinitely more embarrassing things on a regular basis. It would literally benefit me if I wasn't bro-coded. That's so funny. For, for chatters, for chatters, this interaction in my life, which is not all that significant at all, but is like a normal human interaction to have, is considered so beyond the pale that I must be lying about it. It's because you don't go outside. If you think that this is a made-up story, you've just never gone outside and communicated with a human being. Also, it, I, don't know, I don't even know if there's anything sexual in this story, the, the 17-year-old thing. I, I haven't watched it. Um, but I don't know if her being 17 beyond like a, be, it being a coming-of-age story it has anything to do with anything. Also, you're in LA. You have a professional trainer, a professional personal trainer who's likely to work with other famous, semi-famous people. Yeah, I'm... And, you know, a lot of the people that he works with are not all that famous. In, I, don't, I don't know. Is the voice actor of this person famous? I don't know. I doubt it. Shinkai movies are basically Ghibli, but teenage. <sighs> my friends at the premiere were guessing the dude was about 24 and the chick was 16. Bitch, if you read one of my posts, I become the most famous person in my town. I'm not running into the stars of stage and screen out there. The girl that you did girl about is known. She was on Superstore. I don't know what Superstore is. But I asked if she does other voice acting. And uh, she said, no, I usually do TV shows. Like I, I, or I do like, you know, live action shit. Because I was excited. I was like, what else have you voice acted in? Wait, so your trainer's a weeb too? Yes, my trainer is a weeb. My, I have two trainers. One's a fucking huge weeb. And the other one isn't. But the other one, we jokingly say, lived the life of like, what you would see in an anime. Like, one is a huge weeb, the other, like, basically trained in martial arts since birth and never watched anime or knows nothing about popular culture for the most part. So technically, he's literally, like, his life is an anime, so he doesn't really know too much about anime. But we're trying to put him on. This chat has an extremely inflated sense of celebrity of English dub and anime voice actors. Yeah, I know. I think so, too. How do you meet people after high school? First of all, college. And secondly, I meet people in public. I go out in public. I go outside. I play basketball in public parks. Multiple different public parks I go to where I play basketball. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, I go outside to the gym. I work out at a gym. It's a private gym, which is in the backyard of a uh, person's house. But still, there's other people also working out at said gym. Before I went to that gym, I would go to other gyms. And at those gyms, I would meet people because there is always other people outside. Um, after the gym, I go to get coffee, for example, sometimes. And then there are other people at the coffee shop where I go outside and see other people who also want to purchase coffee at the coffee shop outside. I guess I'm trying to say, go outside. You will meet humans outside in the real world. It's a fucking mind-boggling concept. <laughs> Pog, sounds very immersive and open world. Making actual friends can actually be hard as fuck as an adult and everyone blasting this is just as socially awkward. I think making friends as an adult is difficult. I'm very lucky that I work in an industry that basically requires you to socialize. So for that reason, but I'm also a very social person. You know what I mean? So like for that very same reason, I, I socialize regardless, but that's 
what I do. I do, I do that. Like there's always going to be like networking events and stuff like that for whatever particular industry you're in, no matter how bumfuck and rural of a part of the country you live in, please do not fucking tell me that like there isn't literally like a, like a plumbers association networking gala or some shit. There is, you just don't know about it. There always is. No matter how fucking silly or stupid or regular average Joe ass your job is, there is always going to be some kind of fucking, uh, you know, industry-wide, industry-specific thing that you can attend that your company will usually send you to. Um, okay, I am not a plumber, Hassan, says dyslexic femcell. That's just one specific industry that most people would assume doesn't have any kind of networking opportunities of the like that I am pointing to. At the pussy and grass touching convention and nobody knew you. <laughs> no, it's difficult when you work and stuff. I work in boring medical finance. No, first of all, yes, you're wrong. There definitely is some kind of like job uh, related thing that, that uh, makes you socialize. Every industry has it. Like, literally every industry has it. Not sure if I really want to network and connect with other warehouse supervisors, if I'm being honest. No, it, it doesn't matter. What do you mean? Like, dude, you never know. You never know. You never know. You never know. That's not true. What are you, what are you talking about? Dude, you think I'm like, think I'm picking and choosing who the cool people are when I'm fucking meeting people? No, that's not how that works. What the fuck? I just told you. You asked me, how do you meet people in the real world? How do you meet adults in the real world? I go to fucking public parks to play basketball. You think I'm like, oh, I wonder what your job is, sir. Like half the motherfuckers work at Trader Joe's and, and Best Buy. It's not like I'm like, oh man, you know, I hope Earl Sweatshirt is at this park. Sometimes it's Earl Sweatshirt. Most of the time it's just regular old dudes that are going to college or some shit like that. You don't pick and choose. You just are a social person and you meet them and you hang out with them. And, and you, you create, bro, you literally say you go to a private gym. Oh my God, I'm going to fucking die. I said, that's one of the many instances where I am outside. That's not the only place that I go to when I'm outside. Holy fuck. You're arguing with Twitch watchers. None of us actually want to go out and meet people. We just want to be sad. We don't have friends. Yeah, I, I know. I'm just saying that like, if you do actually care about it, if you do actually, uh, you know, legitimately care about it, if you want to like, improve your social skills or meet people. I promise you just like go outside, <laughs> try to go to an HVAC industry thing to meet new friends, but we just stormed some building, beat up some cops. And one guy thought was, I thought was cool. Got arrested for shitting on Nancy Pelosi's desk. Sag. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's get back to fucking woke marketing. Jesus As Christ. Of shoot, he bought one of those like three days ago, right? You can still wear them. You can just not buy more. He can't even shut the fucking thing properly. And the national anthem's fucking blurry. <laughs> Fuck. It's so good. I forgot how good it is. I love this video. So if these angry losers almost accidentally stabbing themselves or giving themselves third degree burns in protest against their functioning property were trying to disincentivize support for progressive ideas, they accidentally did the opposite. Instead, they guaranteed it would happen again. Asana, are you just not going to elaborate on the Earl situation? Yes. I absolutely fucking eviscerated Earl sweatshirt in a 3v3 basketball game. Like, it was unimaginably, I mean, destroyed. Just destroyed. Me and my two trainers versus my other friend Dom and, and Earl and a, a random dude. Straight up. Did he recognize you? No, he had no fucking idea who the fuck I was. Why would he know who I am? You had two trainers, bro. No way that's fair. He's like half your height. No, I didn't. I didn't. No, I wasn't. No, the other. See, this is a great example. The other guy who was on the team, on his team, was a security guy. He was just a random guy who does security at uh, one of these. I forget. I think it's like a music venue, right? Perfect example. He was the guy who I was guarding. He was pretty big. He was like a, a former football player, I think, like for high school or whatever. 
That's my favorite rapper, and he definitely balled you up. He did not. He follows GDF on Insta, though. Good. I think he has great politics. I think he's uh, homies with Zach Fox, too. And they do some, like... Chat is so sheltered. They think just seeing a famous person in LA is a flex. Bro, I'm the famous person people see in LA. <laughs> Chat literally doesn't understand this part of the story. Is that half the time... I'm the guy that they're like, oh my God, I can't believe I fucking met uh, Hassan in the real world. Anyway, regardless, I need you to have lost Hassan. That's how much I like Earl. Sorry, I destroyed him. Anyway. Oops. <laughs> Which brings us to Gillette. Although given my luck, it's pronounced... Giletti. On the 13th of January, Gillette released a commercial entitled, We Believe the Best Men Can Be. Sorry, not a commercial, a short film. It's about how sexism is bad, and you shouldn't follow women around in the street when they're minding their own business. Dude, and don't oh let my kid God. hit other kids. Dude, this was awesome. Conservatives love crying about the dumbest shit, bro. They love crying about the dumbest shit. They cried about this. Remember when they were fucking mad about this? Oh, yeah, yeah. They cry all the time. And then they say the left is constantly the snowflakes. It's like, bro, you saw a commercial and it shook you to your very core. You are not a serious person. You are not a man. Okay? Be a man! Kids, you know, like basic stuff. It's a piece that encourages men to improve themselves in the really hard way, where you question your ingrained behaviors and think about how to encourage yeah, I had to debate this subject so many fucking times on the Austin show, formerly known by another name. This fucking ad. Oh my God, I'm getting like PTSD flashbacks, dude. Encourage better ones. It's not the sort of self-improvement advice men tend to get, frankly. It's quite hard to pass this sort of thing at first when you've spent your life being told the solution is to clean your room, go to the gym, and convince yourself that being shitty to people is actually charisma and proves you have more of a personality than them. The response was... predict. This shit was so old, I remember crying about it before I came here. Oh, I love that. I love that, like, this is such an old school... I mean, this is a four-year fucking old video. A lot can change in four years. There's like chatters who fucking probably thought this is like gay. I can't believe Gillette's trying to make you gay. Oh, yeah, there was this fucking little thing, too. It's almost as if they intended for it, and that was the point, and they wanted it to happen. Stable, clever boys and a few girls from all over the internet emerged to provide an example of their version of masculinity in action by screaming and crying that a commercial said sexism was bad. The commercial itself, anything it said or did, didn't really matter. A commercial gets shown a couple of times and then it goes away. What really mattered was this behavior. It made Gillette the talk of the internet for several full days as all of the rights thought leaders, bit of a misnomer, they don't seem to have had any yet, all emerged to have their own personal two minute hate tweet storm at Gillette, not realizing that they were the actual commercial for Gillette. The Gillette commercial is the product of mainstream radicalized feminism and emblematic of cultural Marxism. It's actually pronounced guillotine. Stop perverting masculinity. Let little boys wrestle. I'm sorry, Candace. It's too late. The Marxists are going door to door and preventing boys from wrestling. Now I could just laugh at these rubbish tweets for another 20 minutes, but instead we're gonna cut right to the funniest one of them all. An account named War Room tweeted, goodbye Gillette, hello Schick. Oh sweet, another gentleman ready to free his skin. This tweet was connected to a picture he'd taken of his Gillette razor floating in a toilet. It was shared pretty widely, so apparently huh. this counts as a form of protest now, but I can't help but imagine the few seconds that happened after this picture was taken. <laughs> This'll show him. <laughs> oh, I have to get the razor out of the toilet now. I have to reach into the toilet with my hands and take it out. I should have thought a bit harder about this, shouldn't I? I can't stop marveling at the majesty of it. Speaking briefly as a man, whose body is in like the top 90 percentiles of testosterone. I've checked. That's why I'm gonna be bold by I'm 28. Look forward to that, future subscribers. I really don't get it. I don't make a habit of questioning other people's masculinity because I think the concept is 
super murky and basically made up and nothing's to be gained from that. But I do think there is a statement here about the status of modern Western men in the fact that millions of them seemingly dropped fucking everything to be mad at a commercial. Like, what the fuck? Aren't we supposed to be hunting the mammoth? <laughs> like... Branding your company based on controversial opinions is rarely a good idea, though. Dude, what are you talking about? Like, it's not a controversial opinion. You think they don't fucking literally mathematically figure out that as a brand, the opinion that they're bringing about is literally not controversial? It's controversial to who? That's the question you need to fucking ask, okay? None of the things that Gillette is saying is controversial. Saying, oh yeah, Dylan Mulvaney is a trans woman. And like, that's great. We think trans women are women and they should drink beers. Our beer specifically is not controversial to the average person. The average person doesn't see that. The average person doesn't hear that. The average person, unless they're like politically fucking brain broken, doesn't think that that is like, oh my God. That's not like how this works for the most part. Okay. That's not how this works for the most part. It's not supposed to be controversial to anybody. The point is, it becomes controversial to the right-wingers because they find this to be, like, unacceptable, okay? They lose their fucking minds, and then everyone else goes, oh, you know what? Oh, dude, this is my favorite type. This is my favorite fucking idiot. Hassan, you kind of forget that half the country votes Republican. No, they don't! No, they don't! No, they don't! Half the country does not vote Republican, that's not a real thing. Half of this country is not Republican. Half of this country isn't Democrat either. You're wrong, okay? You're just objectively wrong. Even out of the voter-eligible population, even through that metric, half the fucking country is not voting Republican. They're not voting for either party. If anything, the most successful political party is the non-voting political party, okay? So you're wrong. Not only that, but also on top of that, Republicans doesn't necessarily mean that they're also like super gung-ho on all the other shit that the Republican media tells you they're supposed to be gung-ho on. That is actually at the heart of the problem that the Republican Party is facing right now in this particular moment. Culture war, wedge issues that they have been fighting on, they have unfortunately become too successful for their own good on, are really biting them in the ass now. Republicans don't win because they win votes. Republicans don't win because they're popular. Republicans win because they cheat. They use gerrymandered districts. They fucking sidestep the legislative body. They court pack. They court pack all the way up to the fucking Supreme Court. They suppress voters. That's how they fucking win. And then they have the Electoral College and they have the Senate. That's it. That's the only reason why Republicans win anything. That doesn't mean they're popular. That doesn't mean their ideas are popular. And even then, amongst the Republican voters, that doesn't necessarily mean that there, are Repub there aren't Republican voters out there that don't even have, like, trans children, for example, or don't even have fucking uh, 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 a gay child who's friends with a queer child or a trans child in their fucking school district, okay? That's what a lot of people keep forgetting. And most importantly, they're just, you know, they don't give a shit. They don't care. They just want to make sure that their housing values are up, they want to make sure that there aren't any poor people or black people in their fucking neighborhoods, some of them. And that's pretty much it. And they want low taxes. But even then, they're still going to drink Bud Light. Even then, they're still going to use Gillette, okay? A Republican hasn't won the popular vote in over 20 years, 20 fucking years. That's why they do not want Gen Z voting at 18. They're trying to kill y'all. Well, that's, you know, um, Bush second time uh, did almost 20. But it's a money cycle. It's easy content package for them. Win-win company. Right-win content. Mill both. The point is, none of this shit is even all that controversial. And it makes the most annoying motherfuckers chirp. That's it. Saying that, you know, men should be less toxically masculine is not a controversial statement. No matter how much, like, men should you know, call out other men when they're engaging in, like, shitty behavior is not really all that controversial of a statement. You are just an animal. You're, like, a lizard brain animal, and, like, other lizard brain animals have gotten mad at it, so you, through pack mentality, go, wait, there's controversy there. 
Some people respond to that and go, wow, this is surely controversial. Oh, it's so bad. I hate it. I'm going to stop using Gillette. Other people go, that's funny. That's you're dumb. You're stupid. I'm going to buy Gillette now because it made you my enemy angry. Huh. <sighs> All these corporations have a team of 500 businessmen come up with scientifically calculated level of non-controversial controversy to spar anger among conservative idiots and admiration among lib idiots. Exactly. This entire video is basically that. That's it. That's the whole video. It's non-controversial controversies that piss off the fucking most annoying hogs that you know. Do you know the pedo hunters? The people who are like, every gay person is a pedophile. Like those guys... The sweaty, gross, weirdo, schizo fucking pieces of shit that go to the parent-teachers conference, even though they technically, in a just world, would not be allowed within a mile radius of a fucking school, those guys are getting mad. Okay? Those guys get really mad. Most other people, even in the conservative circle, look at those guys and go, that's weird and gross. Stop. I just want deregulation and tax cuts for my... Uh, for my real estate business. You know what I mean? Okay, I don't want... What do you, Why are you talking about the genitalia of teenagers like literally in my vicinity? I don't want that. Okay? I just don't want black people in my neighborhood. I don't want any of the other shit. Okay, calm down. Or... It's mostly other people on the other side who are like, no, you're fucking crazy. And I like that the brand is saying that you shouldn't be toxically masculine. Okay, that's it. Clip and ship. Yes, I'm portraying myself as a suburban racist voter. Of course, that's the fucking point I'm making. That's what suburban, that's what these suburban racist voters are voting on. Hello, welcome to the fucking universe that we live in. Screaming at Gillette doesn't feed the tribe, you fucking low T beta. I can say that, by the way, because I have more and I'm going bald. I have to wear it so I get to make the joke. Fuck you! Anyway, Gillette, Keurig, and Nike all successfully boosted their products and their image by way of relying on backlash from weirdos. And it worked. They probably all made quite a lot of sales. Which reminds me, my box of stuff from all of my favorite progressive sounding companies arrived. Ooh, I wonder what's in it. What's this? That's weird. I'm not sure what this is. What could it possibly be? Oh, it's child labor. <laughs> oh yeah, here it comes, baby. <laughs> the generic 10 minute rant about how capitalism is bad that I do at the end of every video now. That's right, I made yet another video to turn out to secretly be all about capitalism. You thought I couldn't do it, but I did. Don't ever question me again! You don't need me to lecture you through Nike's history of sweatshop labor, or their ongoing allegations of poor work conditions, often pulling production from factories that threaten to unionize, and refusing to let the workers' rights consortium inspect their factories. You don't need me to go into exacting detail about Gillette's owners, Procter & Gamble, a giant corporation who are implicated in all kinds of stuff, or the general way big businesses are unethical on so many levels. I'm not even gonna get into the pink tax, the way companies like Gillette can often say vaguely progressive things, but will happily charge women more for effectively the same pro- You live in a white neighborhood? What are you talking about? That's sick, man. Thank you. Um, what I should do instead is go live in East Los Angeles. You're right. This is such a good fucking take. Listen, the difference is, I don't give a shit who my fucking neighbors are, dumbass. And I'm not trying to change actively housing policy. Okay, the difference is the homeowners association dipshits who fucking turn around and literally actively try to make sure that no neighborhood character is eviscerated. Also, you don't know anything about the fucking neighborhood I'm in. I love that this dumbass fucking argument from right wingers is always like, oh man, Hassan, he's like, you know, he's, he's living in the whitest area he could. No, maybe you think I'm living in the whitest area I could, but that's not the reality. Okay, it is a very rich neighborhood still, okay? It's a rich neighborhood, but there's mixed income housing in this neighborhood. I don't have an issue with that. I want more of that. That's my point. I don't live in the fucking ivory tower that you think I live in, even though I don't want to actually, uh, you know, rock the boat. Yes, I live in a gated community. Do not come here. It's definitely gated. I live in the Hasanabi Hills. 
East LA is very gay. You live in a gay neighborhood? No, I live in West. I live in West Hollywood. Also, notice how Hassan magically becomes white when it suits the bigots. I know the very same people who fucking constantly say you're not white, dog. You're not white, dog. You can't say cracker. You're not white. You're not white. All of a sudden, are like you're white and you want to live in a white neighborhood. You're racist. What happened? I thought I wasn't white. What happened? I am, by the way. I always love the owns of you're rich, so you're not allowed to speak on socioeconomical conditions, uh, socioeconomic issues. Yeah, I know. It's so stupid. It's so stupid. It's so stupid. Holy fuck. Guys, I live in, I live in a city. There's a lot of crime happening in this city, so don't come here, please, so much. It's so scary. There are black and brown people everywhere. What's West Hollywood like? Mostly mansions or a mix? Depending on where you are, but it's mostly mix. It's not mansions at all, as a matter of fact. It's usually apartments. Because West Hollywood is the poor man's, even though it's very still incredibly fucking expensive, but it's the poor man's Beverly Hills. That's it. And then there's different varying degrees of Beverly Hills. There's the place that they call Flats, which is on Flatland, closer to Rodeo Drive, but still has mixed income housing. Or not mixed income housing, but mixed zoning, basically. And then you have the hill side of the Beverly Hills, which is where all the fucking mega mansions are. None of this matters. They're all still incredibly fucking expensive, in comparison to our Kansas, because the LA housing market is fucking disgusting. The reason why it's disgusting is because of the fucking dipshits that I was just mentioning that are like, I don't want to upset the neighborhood character. No, it sucks to drive in. Was on La Cienega earlier today, and the street is awful, Lamal. Don't even get me started on La Cienega. That's literally where I blew up the tire to my Porsche. I think you confuse East LA with the East side. No, East Los Angeles, for the most part, is where there is uh, more affordable housing, even though it is being rapidly gentrified. That is what that is literally where uh, most of the affordable housing is. What the fuck are you talking about? It is historically. It is historically. Uh, predominantly Hispanic or sometimes, depending on where, uh, depending on where you are, Asian communities. The problem is there's not really anything. There's not, there isn't really any area that is like close, to, that, that's in basically the, the greater Los Angeles uh, 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 area that, that, you could say is like affordable. It's just not. It's really fucked up. You get mistaken for Latino a lot? No. I've never been mis dog, I'm six four. Nothing. I didn't. <laughs> I love that it's, uh, there are tall teams. I know, man. It's a fucking joke. Shut up. Jesus Christ. Cancellation number one, two, three. Run it up. I... Puerto Rican vegan socialist. Fuck you. <laughs> Casually racist. Hassan doing racial essentialism kind of cringe. Oh God, I fucking, I just, sometimes when I say stuff like this, like I really, when I, when I read stuff like this, I just want to be like, I wish I was a right winger. I really do. Like, it's just like the most, yes, dude, I'm doing race essentialism. I actually just read the bell curve too. And I agree with everything in it. And uh, honestly, that's it. Everything I believe in, in my in my life, I just, you know, God, it would be so easy. It'd be so easy to be right wing. True, and Latinos don't generally have astronomically tiny heads. Wow, that's hurtful. Words are violence, you, you asshole.
So the real reason why I made that joke is because there is a six foot and under league at one of the parks I play at and they never let me play. Okay. So who's, who's being the real racist now? Yeah, exactly. That's what I thought. It's called discrimination and it's really fucked up. <laughs> telling you, it's either I don't understand this chat or the chat does not understand you at all. Fake story. Maybe you are. El Topo Loco seems like you want to be. Fake story. Yeah, I made up the fake story of the six foot and under league. Yeah, you, that definitely never happens. Famously. Product if they think they can get away with it. And don't even get me started on Keurig. Their coffee... Okay, I didn't say that they were all Latino. You made that inference. Okay, you made that. Isn't very nice. And also a bunch of labor violations. You know most of this stuff happens already, and we all know it's bad. I'm not saying you should personally feel bad for buying the products of these companies either. Almost every company has something in their production chain which, if you sat and looked at it, you'd probably find unethical. That's the world we live in, and we don't change it by feeling bad about our tacit participation, we change it by trying to find ways of altering the way things are. The point here is that businesses exist to make money. Sometimes that's in the form of moving jobs to a country that does it cheaper, often because they don't have to treat their workers as well. Sometimes it's in the form of fiddling their taxes so much that not only did they pay less taxes than you, you technically paid them. Sometimes it's in the form of charging women more for pink razors, and sometimes it's in finding new ways to make you think about buying their product. These clips sound nice, inspirational even. They say things that not only do I agree with, but which I think are normal and not in the slightest bit radical. But they're commercials. Their purpose is to sell you things. What the fuck? They're a what? marketing strategy with little to no impact on the actual problems that threaten our world. I mean, heck, they won't even admit their commercials are commercials anymore. They're short films. It's got a cinematic aspect ratio, so you know it's classy and not an ad. There's this sequence where they play an old Gillette ad and symbolically break through it as if to surpass it. But this is all window dressing designed to disguise that you are being sold something. It's really insidious to me how completely companies are trying to mask the fact that that's what they're doing. They're still just trying to find a way to get you. And it turns out that people don't go for hiring a model to pretend to eat a sandy pineapple burger anymore. They go for something that sounds really progressive and forward thinking, and that all the weirdos on Twitter seem to be mad about. It's just like dear old dad always used to tell me, son, there is no ethical consumption under capitalism. Actually, that's a lie. That's my fantasy. Dad mostly just sat in the corner and read Victor Klemperer books. But I'm the Victor Klemperer of my age, father! I tell everyone which video games are bad! Brands are not our friends. But it is nice, isn't it? I mean, I can make fun of people for buying razors just to spite some weirdos online or for liking a commercial or whatever, but... It is pretty cool that a company actually invited discussion of these issues. Just keep in mind that there are deeper problems with these companies that we do need to talk about and solve, and don't let them buy your allegiance by saying something vaguely progressive sounding in a commercial. Besides, there are better, less invasive, more genuine ways of getting your product out there to people. Which brings me to Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream is a subscription. All right, uh, let's talk about Let's talk about unions, okay? We're going to move away from this. I think this was a good opportunity to, to cover.